Let's get weird into it. Number 10, the brain's rerun. Picture this. You're at a friend's barbecue, flipping a burger that's rapidly achieving the consistency of a charcoal briquette. Your friend tells a mediocre joke about a squirrel. The smoke stings your eyes. Suddenly, a wave of cosmic certainty washes over you. You've been here before. You've flipped this exact doomed burger, heard this exact lame joke, felt this exact puff of smoke. It's not just similar. It's a frame-for-frame, shot-for-shot remake of a memory you can't actually place. This feeling, this bizarre mental echo, is déjà vu, which is French for already seen. And if you've ever felt it, congratulations. You're a card-carrying member of the club of people with brains. About two-thirds of the population experiences it. So you're not a special psychic unicorn, sorry to say. This sensation is more than just recognizing a familiar place. It's a full-body, high-definition experience of a moment, coupled with the chilling, absolute knowledge that this moment is a repeat. Yet, at the exact same time, another part of your brain is screaming, No, it isn't. You've never been to Kevin's new apartment before. This internal conflict is the hallmark of déjà vu. It's the feeling of your perception splitting in two. One side is convinced it's watching a rerun, while the other knows for a fact that this is the season premiere. This duality is what makes it so unsettling. It's not a memory. It's a feeling about a memory that doesn't exist. Your brain is basically gaslighting you, and you're just standing there, spatula in hand, wondering if you're losing your mind over a squirrel joke. Number 9. The Glitch in the Matrix We have to get this one out of the way, because if we don't, the entire comment section will just be quotes from a movie that's old enough to have a mortgage. In the Matrix, when Neo sees the same black cat walk by twice, Trinity ominously explains, Deja vu is usually a glitch in the Matrix. It happens when they change something. And with that one line of dialogue, a generation of people had a cool, sci-fi, vaguely paranoid explanation for a common neurological hiccup. The idea is simple. Our reality is a simulation, and when the architects of this simulation make an update, say, patching the bird physics or nerfing the difficulty of parallel parking, the system stutters. For a split second, the code repeats, and you get a momentary playback. As much as we'd love for this to be true, it's probably not. Neuroscientists, who are notoriously boring at parties, will tell you that the explanation likely involves firing neurons, not sentient squid bots. But the glitch in the matrix theory perfectly captures the feeling of déjà vu. It feels external, like an error in the world itself, not in our own heads. It's a profound sense of wrongness, of a crack in the facade of reality. Your brain isn't just saying, I've seen this before. It's saying, this should not be happening again. It's a feeling so powerful and so strange that blaming it on omnipotent machine overlords who've trapped us in a digital prison actually feels more comforting than the truth. The truth being that your own brain, the squishy meat computer you rely on for everything, just blue screened for a second. Number eight, your brain's filing cabinet disaster. Let's imagine your brain's memory system is a vast bureaucratic office. You have an inbox on your desk for new experiences. This is your short-term memory. At the end of the day, a tiny, overworked intern takes everything from the inbox and files it away in the massive long-term memory archive down the hall. Simple enough. But sometimes, this intern is tired. He's been up all night, he spilled coffee on his pants, and he's just not paying attention. He grabs a new, incoming memory, like seeing that squirrel at the barbecue, and instead of putting it in the short-term inbox on the desk, he fumbles it. The memo slips from his grasp and, through a series of slapstick maneuvers, flies across the room and lands directly in the long-term archive, filed under S for squirrel-related incidents, passed. A nanosecond later, your brain properly perceives the squirrel. It sends a request to the archive. Hey, have we seen this before? And the archive, dutifully, responds, You bet we have. It's right here. Already filed in everything. Dated. Hey, wait a minute. Your brain is now looking at a brand new experience that has inexplicably been stamped with the authority of a long-term memory. This is the memory misattribution theory. The information took a wrong turn, a shortcut from perception directly to long-term storage, skipping the short-term memory phase entirely. So when your conscious mind catches up, it feels like you're recalling an old memory instead of forming a new one. It's not a glitch in the matrix. It's a clerical error committed by a deeply incompetent neural intern. Number seven, the double take glitch. Your brain is constantly absorbing information from your senses at a ridiculous speed, 
It's like you're watching dozens of high-definition video feeds at once. Usually, it stitches all this information together into one seamless, coherent experience of reality. But what if one of those feeds buffered for just a moment? This is the core of the split perception theory. The idea is that you perceive something twice in very rapid succession. The first perception is incredibly brief and happens on a subconscious level. Maybe you glanced at something out of the corner of your eye, or your brain processed the sensory input a fraction of a second before your conscious mind became aware of it. This initial perception is so quick, you don't even register it. It's like a subliminal message you give yourself. Then, a millisecond later, you perceive the exact same thing again, but this time consciously. Your brain, in its infinite and easily confused wisdom, interprets this second, conscious perception, as a separate event. It then searches its memory banks for the first event, finds it from a millisecond ago, and declares, Aha! I remember this. The result is a bizarre sensation of familiarity for an event that is, for all intents and purposes, brand new. It's the neurological equivalent of your Wi-Fi stuttering while you're streaming a movie, causing the same frame to flash twice. You're not seeing the future. You're just experiencing a tiny lag in your own personal broadcast. Number six, the vibe check, lobe. Let's get a bit more specific. Deep within your temporal lobe, the part of your brain located roughly behind your temples, is a region called the rhinal cortex. You can think of this area as your brain's official vibe checker. Its job isn't to remember the specific details of a memory, like what color shirt your friend was wearing. Its job is much simpler. It just handles the feeling of familiarity. When you see your best friend, the rhinal cortex lights up and screams, Yes, familiar. I know this one. When you see a complete stranger, it stays quiet. It's a simple, binary, yes or no switch for recognition. It's separate from the hippocampus, which is the brain's librarian, in charge of recalling the specific details of the memory. Deja vu, according to this theory, is what happens when the vibe checker messes up. For some reason, the rhinal cortex randomly fires off a familiar signal for a completely new experience. Your brain gets this powerful, overwhelming feeling of recognition. But when it asks the hippocampus for the details, the hippocampus just shrugs and says, Nope. Never seen it before in my life. The archives are empty. This creates that signature conflict of deja vu, an intense feeling of familiarity completely detached from any actual memory. Your rhinal cortex is essentially yelling, I know that guy, at a random person on the street, while the rest of your brain is trying to gently pull it away, whispering, Please stop. You're making a scene. Number 5. The Brain's Electrical Storm For a long time, the best clues about deja vu came from a slightly terrifying source. Epilepsy. Specifically, temporal lobe epilepsy. Patients who experience seizures in this region of the brain often report experiencing intense, prolonged, and often distressing deja vu right before a seizure begins. This is known as an aura, a sort of neurological warning shot. During these episodes, the electrical activity in their temporal lobes goes haywire, causing neurons to fire randomly and chaotically. This electrical storm overstimulates the regions responsible for memory and familiarity, like our old friend, the rhinal cortex. This observation was a breakthrough for researchers. It suggested that deja vu isn't some mystical phenomenon, but a physical, electrical event in the brain. For people without epilepsy, a moment of deja vu could be thought of as a micro-seizure, a tiny, harmless misfire in that same brain region. A little blip of electrical static that causes the familiarity circuits to flicker on for a second before correcting themselves. So, when you feel that wave of eerie recognition, what you might be experiencing is a miniature electrical brainstorm. A brief moment of neural anarchy. It's your brain's equivalent of a power surge that makes the lights flicker. It's a little unsettling, but at least the building isn't burning down. Probably. Number 4. The Un Déjà Vu To truly appreciate the weirdness of déjà vu, we should talk about its even weirder, more unsettling cousin, jamais vu. This is French for never seen, and it's the exact opposite experience. Jamais vu is when you look at something you know is incredibly familiar, like your own face in the mirror, the face of a loved one, or a word you've written a thousand times, and it suddenly feels completely alien and unrecognizable. You know objectively that this is your spouse of 20 years, but for a terrifying moment, your brain refuses to provide the corresponding feeling of familiarity. It's like looking at a stranger. This happens to most people in small, harmless ways. Ever repeat a word over and over again until it loses all meaning and just sounds like a bizarre collection of noises? That's a mini-episode of Jamais Vu.
It's a temporary disconnection between a concept and its meaning, but for some, it can be a profoundly disorienting clinical symptom. It's the brain's vibe checker, not just failing to fire, but actively refusing to engage. If deja vu is your brain mistakenly flagging a new file as old, Jamais vu is your brain looking at a file that's been on your desk for decades and treating it like a mysterious, potentially hostile artifact from another dimension. Honestly, it makes the momentary feeling of being a psychic seem pretty tame in comparison. Number three, past lives and other bad excuses. Naturally, when faced with a phenomenon as uncanny as deja vu, humans have done what they do best, come up with explanations that are way more exciting than reality. The most popular of these is, of course, the idea of past lives. The reason you feel like you've been in that new coffee shop before is because you have, as a 19th century haberdasher who died tragically in a top hat accident. Or maybe you're not remembering a past life, but glimpsing a future one. Or maybe it's a memory from a dream that you've forgotten, now playing out in real life. These ideas are romantic, tantalizing, and make for great movie plots. The problem, however, is that they're completely untestable and fly in the face of everything we know about how the brain works. Deja vu experience are almost always about mundane, boring situations. Nobody ever gets deja vu while discovering a hidden treasure or single-handedly stopping an alien invasion. It's always while doing laundry or sitting in a traffic jam. If these were really memories from a past life, you'd think they'd be a little more epic. Furthermore, the feeling is almost always fleeting and vague on the details. You never remember what's going to happen next. You don't know that the squirrel is about to knock over a can of soda. You just have a strong, baseless feeling of having been there. It's less like a memory and more like a neurological brain fart, dressed up in a mystical trench coat. Number two, the teenager's curse. Have you noticed that you probably experienced deja vu a lot more when you were a teenager or in your early 20s? You're not imagining it. Studies consistently show that deja vu peaks in adolescence and young adulthood, then gradually becomes less frequent as you get older. So what is it about being young that makes your brain so prone to these temporal hiccups? Well, for one, a young brain is a brain in overdrive. It's still developing, forging new neural pathways at an incredible rate, and generally buzzing with activity. It's more excitable, and therefore more prone to the occasional misfire. But there's another, simpler reason. Young people are just having more new experiences. You're going to new places, meeting new people, and encountering new situations constantly. With a higher volume of newness, there are simply more statistical opportunities for your brain's filing system to make a mistake. Your neural intern is swamped with an unprecedented amount of new paperwork, making it far more likely he'll drop a file or two. As you get older, your life often settles into more of a routine. There are fewer novel experiences, so there are fewer chances for the deja vu glitch to occur. It's not that your brain is getting better, it's just that life is getting a little more boring. It's the one downside of having a stable, predictable existence. Fewer moments of existential, time-bending weirdness. Number one, the feeling about the feeling. Perhaps the strangest part of deja vu isn't the sensation of reliving a moment. It's the secondary sensation that happens right after. The crystal clear awareness that the feeling is wrong. This is what scientists call a conflict in cognition. You're simultaneously experiencing a powerful feeling of a memory being recalled and the powerful knowledge that you're creating a memory for the first time. Your brain isn't just making a mistake. It's making a mistake and immediately running a diagnostic check that flags the mistake in real time. This is why you don't just accept the feeling and move on. You stop, frown, and say, Whoa, deja vu. This meta-awareness is actually a sign of a healthy brain. It shows that your brain's fact-checking and reality monitoring systems are working perfectly. They correctly identify the sensation of familiarity as false and alert your conscious mind to the discrepancy. In a way, deja vu is the feeling of your own brain catching itself in a lie. It's a brief startling glimpse into the complex and sometimes faulty machinery of your own mind. It reminds us that our perception of reality isn't a perfect, flawless video recording. It's a messy, cobbled together reconstruction, prone to errors, glitches, and the occasional rerun. It's your brain's way of saying, don't trust me completely. I'm just making all of this up as I go along. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.